We are going to uh, start where we left off last week. Um, we looked at worship last week and how worship can in our lives and why we should worship. Well, this week we're going to look at praise. And those who want a title, the title is this. Quite simply, praise is not an option. Praise is not an option. Wow. What do I mean by that? Well, you might say praise is worship, and you're not far away from that as a mutually cooperated activity and a frequently very similar outward express, but are not one and the same as we found out last week. And if you want to look at last week's, um, is it online? Oh, it will be online this afternoon about worship. Yeah? Do, uh, it's on our YouTube channel. I think we've got a YouTube channel. So on our YouTube channel, pick up on worship and this will make perhaps more sense to you today. But um, with this in mind, if you've got your Bibles with you, yeah, um, that's great. If not, we do put it on screen so you can follow. So... And this is taken from the NIV today, so I'm not going to be many millions away from the King James or whatever. Um, and it says this, full Psalm 148 says this, Praise the Lord from, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him from the heights above. Praise him, all his angels, praise him all the heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all, all the shining stars. Shining stars, sorry. Praise him, you highest heavens and the waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He issues a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and ocean depth, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and cattle small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for the name alone is exalted, his splendor is above the earth and heavens, and he has raised up his people, a horn, Incidentally, it all means strength. The praise of his faithful servants, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you didn't get the word praise on that, there's, there's a lot of praise there. There's a lot of praise there. Yeah? Praise the Lord. That's the message today. That is the message today I want to speak about, is praising the Lord. And this psalm is a picture of how we as believers should praise God, individually and yet part of a great choir of believers. Great choir of believers, worldwide. Everyone praise God. He is saying here, it is not an option, but one of a command. Not when we feel like it, praising or not. And sometimes we do feel like praising. Sometimes we've had a great week. And sometimes we say, in that great week, I can't but praise the Lord. But what about the weeks when we haven't had it so great? What about the weeks when we've struggled? What about the weeks? It's harder to praise the Lord. But that's what he says. Praise the Lord. He says, we need to praise the Lord. The command is simply praise. Praise is a command, you. Yeah. He wants to meet you where you are. I want to say that today. Jesus wants to meet you where you are. Yeah? 
He wants to meet you where you are. You know, it's surprising people don't feel worthy enough to worship or pray. And I've said about the, the man in, in this community when I was conducting the funeral many years ago. And uh, I offered to pray with him. And he ran away from me. In his living room. In his living room. He ran away and said, I'm not worthy to be, to pray, to be prayed for. Sad, isn't it? It is sad. You know, that's no exaggeration. There's no exaggeration. I was at his house to discuss the funeral of his girlfriend who had, who had taken, who had died. And he just said simply, don't pray for me, Pastor. I'm not worthy to be prayed. And I found that really sad. I found that really sad. You know, 3 John 16 says this simply, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And that means you today. That means you today. The option is there for you today. All it means, you know, God wants you to accept the truth. See, people don't always understand they need to accept Jesus into their life. They need that into their life. And we should praise, should we not? And you would all agree we should praise. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you won't. I don't want guilt on this today, man. I'm not saying this because of guilt. I don't think you are praising. I just want to enhance our relationship with God. I want this to enhance your relationship with God. This is the purpose of this today. Even if you're listening, it's you to enhance our relationship with God. And I want to just look a little more depth into the subject of praise. I think we need to. So, as I said, praise is not an option for the believer. It's a command. Why? Because kings don't ask. They simply command. They command. Yeah? Jesus is king. And to praise is a command. It's not an option. Do we praise because God needs us to? Do we praise because God needs us to? The answer is simply no, of course not. Surely we should not be as arrogant to even think that, to think that God needs our praises. He doesn't need our praises. He is God, whether he's God, whether we praise him or not. He is still God, is he not? He is still God, whether we sit here and praise him this morning or we don't praise him. Whether we have a bad week and we say, I'm not praising him, God, well, he is still God. He is still God. He doesn't need our promises. Do we praise because God needs us to? The answer is simply no. Surely we should not be arrogant to think that. We need to praise not because it benefits God. Do you know God is God whenever he's not? I've already said that. We need to praise for our own good. Wow. We need to praise for us, for our own good. We need to praise God for our own good. Yes, I did say that. It's for our own good. For your own good. I want us to realise, church, that until we praise him, we're not able to come into a proper relationship with him. Wow. We praise him, it allows us to come into a proper relationship with him. Obviously, we've got to give out, as I've already said, obviously, we have got to make a decision but then when we make a decision, it's a growth, yeah? See, we have praise in heart. Without the praise in heart, we will never grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus. We will never grow into that grace. And there's another reason. There's another reason. There's many reasons, I'm sure. God loves our praises enthroned in them. As some commentator said, God inhabits rest as he sits upon and dwells within. His people's songs of worship and adoration, his people's songs of worship and adoration, we see that in Psalm 22, 3. And Colossians 3, 16 says simply, sing psalms and spiritual songs with gratitude in our hearts to God. 
See? What I want us to understand is about praise. And God wants us to understand about praise. Do you know why I say that? Because it says it in the Bible 246 times. I haven't checked that out, by the way. If anybody wants to check that out and count them, do come back to me. But some say between 240 and 246 times. Wow! Doesn't he want us to get hold of this word praise? He wants us to get hold of this word praise, church. I looked at that and I thought, why would somebody mention it 246 times? Why would that happen? You know, once, twice, and they say three times, God wants you to understand it, but 246 times? I'm sure he's telling us something today. I'm sure he's telling us something, you know? When Kath tells me to load the dishwasher, perhaps not once, perhaps not twice, but 246 times, I start taking notice, yeah? I start taking notice, and I start loading the dishwasher. Do you know what, isn't it funny? This is not related, uh, you might not think this is funny, but it used to be who was doing the washing up, and now it's who's loading the dishwasher and, and unloading the dishwasher. It's mad, isn't it? It's not about washing up anymore, it's about unloading and loading. But you know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? So far good the reasons to praise God, right? We, we all admit we need to praise God. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do here today. You know we should praise God. We know we should praise God. And we know that we should praise God whenever, you know? We know that. But praise is not a command, only a command, but the gift we give to God. It's sacrifice of the heart. And when we sing about sacrificing, it takes time to praise. It takes a heart to praise. It takes, you know, energy to praise. It takes a lot to praise when we're even feeling down. It's a sacrifice. Yeah? It's a sacrifice. It's easy to praise when everything's going fine. But it's hard when you had such a bad week, perhaps, and it comes through that door and you think, you see a song come out, or we talk about praise in the Psalms, as I always do, and you think, oh, pastor, I could do without this today. It's about praise. It's about the sacrifice of the heart. And it takes time, and it takes effort to praise, to switch your mind off everything else, and to praise God, you know? It takes time. The more we praise God and give him this gift, the more we will be filled with God's love to share with others. I love that. I love that, don't you? The more we praise God and give him this gift, okay, the more we will be filled with God's love to share others. Isn't that great? Isn't that great thought? Isn't that great? But we need a praise, and the more we do it, the more we will be filled with God's love to share with others. And we need to rely on the power of praise. Yes, I said that, power of praise. There's power in praise. There's lots of power in praise. Many times we see praise in the Bible with the result of great power. For instance, Jehoshaphat faced battle which speaks to God. He speaks to God, he says, for we have no power to face the vast army attacking us. We have no power to, to face this battle that's facing us, he says. If you want to read more of that, look at 2 Chronicles 20 and read from there. And it says this, the spirit of the Lord came upon Shahazel, who was a lever, a dependent of Asphalt, chief musician at the time of King David. Why did the Spirit of the Lord come up on a, a musician? A musician. Why was that? Jehazel proclaimed, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. God promised him victory. So what did Jehoshaphat do? What does he do without going into this deeply? It's a great read, by the way. 
It's a great read, by the way. What he does in verse 20, Jehoshaphat then proceeds to appoint a group of men to sing praises. He says, he says, we need a group. Guys, we want volunteers to come forward. We want to sing. We want to praise the Lord. He doesn't say, men, all those with guns come forward. He says, all oh, those, we need to get a choir going here. And they must have thought, this is nuts. This is nuts. We, we're standing in a battle here. Yeah? We're in a battle. And what did Joasaphat says? He says, come, guys, sign up for being in a choir. How nuts do that sound? Yeah? You would think he would say, come, have a elite force. We need to do this. We need to do that. But no, he says, come and sign up for the choir. Wow. 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 He proclaims, do not be afraid or discouraged. Become this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God. God promises him victory. God promises him victory. Important. Yeah? Yeah? He says, <clears throat> sing praises and say, give thanks to the Lord for his love and his favour. So what we're going to do, we've got an, an army up there, we are, we are, we are outnumbered, you know, we've, we've seen that. We've got an army up there, we're outnumbered, and what we're going to do, we're going to get quiet together, and we're going to sing to the Lord. How does that sound? How does that sound? Yeah? And not only that, he sends these in front of the warriors. He says, come here, choir, warriors, battle warriors, stand back. We're going to put the choir in front. And we're going to march and just sing. We're going into battle. But you're the most important. You've got the keyboard in your shoulders, you've got the drums. Yeah, you will go go out. And the warriors can stand back for a moment. What did they think? You know? What did they think? You know? I know we read this and we see the end, so it all makes sense, but imagine it. Imagine it for one moment. Imagine being there. Imagine being there. See, he knew, and the, the Lord delivers to them the battle. And the Lord delivers them the battle. Yeah? They don't have to fight. All they've got to do is go and sing. He's loving to us forever. That's all they do is sing. And the Lord delivers them the battle. No fight game. Outnumbered. Just singing. Praising God. And the Lord delivers them back. Incredible, isn't it? Incredible. He knew who the true warriors would be that day. It was great that Jehoshaphat listened. Yeah? He listened. Yeah? He listened to the head of, of the choirs who said, this is what we need to do. He listened. He knew who the true warriors would be that day. The praises would win the battle. Praise the Lord. The praises would win the battle. Praise the Lord. How many times do we put ourselves in battle when all we have to do is praise God? How many times do we put ourselves forward and try and battle in our name? And all we've got to do is praise God. Simple analogy was yesterday. We have a market in the I'm sorry I'm talking about work here, but I, I just want to just illustrate something. We have a market in Pompey Pool on a, um, once every three, four weeks, something like that. We have it to try and increase footfall. And then the market tiers or whatever you call them, call them market tiers or whatever, they came in and said, do you want a free gazebo or go outside? Yeah, it will draw more people to your shop. And, uh, you know, you can have it for free. You want to get more people down this area. And I said to Kathy, I said, great idea. 
Absolutely. I said, uh, if we are been struggling in Pontypool with football, as you know, I don't know if anybody knows Pontypool, perhaps you don't even know it, because perhaps you haven't even been there. But um, football has been a low, and um, Kathy said to me, Wayne, don't do it. Don't do that. It's not going to work. Just go take your focus off the shop. Tell me you don't want it. I said, but Kathy, it's free. Anything is free. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's free. I don't have to pay for it. I can have a busy but I said, don't. All we need to do is step down and pray and pray to the Lord. That's all we need to do. And um, I, I felt a little bit, I must be honest, as a pastor, I should know better, but I felt a little bit with my tail between my legs. And... Um, and I said, oh, so be it, yeah? We'll have a rubbish day, and we're not going to do anything, you know? Threw my toys at the pram, you know, like we do. And do you know what? The person who had a gazebo outside the shop, then they little. We had the best Saturday. We had a normal and probably a better Saturday than we've had for a long time. Isn't that great? But it was by praising God. It wasn't by trying to make the situation better. That's what I'm trying to get over here. It was by praising God. And sometimes we need to be told to do that. Even pastors, I'll open up my hands. Yeah? We want to fix things. We want to fix things ourselves. And sometimes God doesn't want us to fix things. Yeah? These praises, you know, they were singing, give thanks to the Lord. He said, Loving you as forever. They were not calling fire down from heaven. They were not invoking God's wrath upon the heathen. They were not rebuking the enemy or calling God to act specifically. They weren't doing all that. I knew that so many times. Or I rebuke. Yeah? They weren't doing that. They were singing. They were singing. That's right. They were singing. Lord, you recognize the omnipotent meaning of a deity who has unlimited power. God has unlimited power, let me tell you. Yeah? He has unlimited power. He has more power than we do. Yeah? He can fix things in an instant. I would click my hands, but it's not working today. But he fixes things in an instant. Yeah? He has power. Yeah? God, you promised to fight for us today, they said. So we thank and we praise you for the victory. You promised. So we thank you for the victory. And we rejoice in what you know as already determined to do on our behalf. That's what they said. That's what they said. They had the faith to give it to God. They had the faith to praise the Lord. They had the faith to listen to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And as a result, they won the battle. Read it for yourself. And the, and the spoils took ages to actually pick up because there were so many in that battle. The spoils of war. Do we praise like that? Church, do we praise like that? I'm going to say that today. A question I don't want you to answer. Just answer it in your own mind. Do you praise like that today? Do you praise like that? Of course we do. We're like that church, yeah? We all praise like that, of course we do, yeah? Words like that let God to act in the way he knows best. See, when we, when we jump into the situation, what I'm trying to get over here, when he jumps into the situation, what happens? We mess it all up. We mess it all up. And God must sit back and go, when are you all going to learn? Including me, by the way. Including me, by the way. You know? Warfare through praise does not dictate, dictate to God what he should do, but it praises him for wisdom and, and might and recognition. We can't tell God what to do. And we like to tell God what to do. Yeah? We can't tell God what to do. We are not to tell God what to do. But we are to praise him and put all our trust in God and praise him, yeah? We need to praise him 
for wisdom and might recognizing he will and he is capable to settle the problem that we face because he knows best. See, we do not focus on the battle or the enemy, but we look at one solution only. We only look at one solution, and that one solution is God. That is where we look. We don't look at the battle. We don't look at the enemy. We look at God. God is our deliverer. God delivers us into victory, may I have. That was a poor amen. Into victory I may add. Amen. Amen. Into victory. What are you battling today? You know, I feel God is saying to give it to him. And praise. It's not for me. Yes, we want the praise in church. But the praise is for you. It's not for me, it's for God. Yeah? It's your sacrifice to God this morning. It's your sacrifice. Your praises are your sacrifices. Yeah? You might, have, you might be in issues that we don't know about. You might not feel like it, but sometimes we just need, we just need the praise. Sometimes we need that, that song on, that song in the car, that song at home. Yeah? That, that spiritual song. Sorry I'm going on on this, but I think this is important. I think this is very important for the church today. In Reflections on Psalms, C.S. Lewis writes this, Praise is an inner elf made audible. Praise is an inner elf made audible. C.S. Lewis said that. Praise is an inner elf made audible. For those with an elfy spirit life, praise is natural. It easily flows from the heart of one who is a relationship to God. For others, lack of understanding, and this is a big one, fear of embarrassment. Who's embarrassed to sing? We're all embarrassed to sing, you know, you know. And pride inhabits the spirit man from thriving, causing praise to be silent. Let's not be embarrassed praising God. Let's not be embarrassed praising God. You know, I know what it likes to feel a bit embarrassed, and I shared this with you before, and I'm going to share this again. And you know, I hear the groans coming now. I can hear the groans in my, in my ears going, oh, not again, not another story of pastor. Oh, no. But this is true. As a youngster, of a man of about 17, youngster, yeah, I was 17, trying to impress my mother-in-law, and father in law when I was caught in Kathy. Yes, that's an old word, caught in. My grandkids think that's a, they've never heard that word before, but you know what I mean. I want to impress. I would go to church with her. Uh, that's another story. Granddad, or my father in law would stand up here and he would make us quite a few quips about me, but that's okay. And I would be there and we would sing. And my mother-in-law, who's gone to glory now, would say, would say this, would go, you open your mouth, but no words are coming out. And I used to go, I'm sure I am singing. She went, no, I don't think you sing. And I was like, and she said, why don't you sing? And I was like, because I like my men. I like my men. But I was embarrassed, yeah? I was embarrassed to open my mouth. That was the truth, yeah? And uh, I don't think any of us should feel embarrassed because we're all family, yeah? Whether you're out of tune, whether you're tone deaf, make a joyful noise to the Lord, it says. You don't even have to sing. You don't even have to sing and just clap if you want. But you're making that effort. You're making that praise. You're being sacrificial. You might have a tambourine. You can do that, yeah? You can, you know, we want to praise the Lord, yeah? We're not you for Britain's Got Talent, yeah? If you want, I'm not going to enter you into Britain's Got Talent unless you want to, of course, yeah? It's not about that, yeah? You know, we're not going to 
and, and say, do you know what? You're deaf, eh? Hey? You're up the tune. Because I'm up the tune. I am tone deaf. But I went to, um, when I worked for an uh, electrical company, I went to uh, a singing, uh, um, a team building thing. But it was about singing. I know that's odd. But I always remember what the guy said to me and said to us, even though he was trying to sing, he was really bad. He, he said, everybody can sing. Everybody can sing. Yeah? It's just that some are worse than others. And that's fine. That's fine. That's what I'm saying. But it's not all about singing, is it? It's making a noise, you know? How can we not praise a risen saviour? We need to ask ourselves that question. How can we not praise a risen, a risen saviour with a power with so much power on it, who died for me and you, so that we may have eternal life. How can we not praise it? God is speaking to us today, church. Why? Because he wants to raise up a victorious, a conquering, and an overcoming church in this area. That is what God wants for this area. I know because I feel he has said that. Yeah? He has said that. We need to praise. We need to praise. We need to magnify God's name in praise and worship. The principality and powers of the air will bow down to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in this area. Or in any area. I'm going to say that again. When we magnify God's name in praise and worship, the principalities and powers of the air will bow down to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen? We war in praise, and we praise when victory is won. It is finished with the triumphant cry. With the knowledge and rejoicing in battles won, we turn to God not only in praise, but in worship. And we're going to leave it there for today. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow.